just a few words about differential forms. It will be very, very elementary, informal introduction, but then we can discuss a little bit uh, more about differential forms. So, uh, one of the motivations uh, was uh, Stokes' theorem uh, in our review of uh, vector analysis. Uh, you had several versions of this theorem in your multivariable calculus class, uh, and they all can be formulated as a single Stokes theorem. So in this um, general form, we have one integral, so m is assumed to be a compact oriented k-dimensional manifold with boundary. So, uh, and uh, it's a good, um, at this moment, just think about uh, m as a hemisphere, right? So here is a hemisphere, it's, it has a boundary, right? So you have a sphere and you uh, introduce a cut. So uh, in red here, it's boundary. So this is um, uh, dm, it's a boundary. And uh, what is omega here, it is a differential form that we just want to uh, discuss. Uh, a simple version, the simplest version of uh, Stokes' th theorem is um, fundamental theorem of calculus. So then here you can think of your manifold to be just a segment AB and it is oriented, right? We go from A to B and uh, its boundary consists only uh, of two points A and B uh, and minus here kind of implicitly shows uh, our orientation and what is a reasonable assumption of function f is to think that it is just a c a c1 function right okay so um then um how we can start so we can start with ancient greeks so they were thinking about regions let's think in our three-dimensional space right they are thinking about regions as a collections infinite connection collections of surfaces right so they're made out of surfaces and each surface is made out of curves right that glued together infinitely many curves and each curve is made out of points infinitely many points glued together and so now let's let's go backwards in in calculus um, we had a notion of function so what function does uh, it's it is a rule that assigns to each point uh, say a scalar right so uh, the key words here point right so we have a point we have a rule that assigns to it this point uh, something um, say a scalar for instance right so, so then we've seen in calculus also one dimensional integrals integral um, along oriented curve of this form or just the simplest integrals of p dx and we can think of what we have here inside as a rule that assigns to, a uh, to some curve uh, a number, right? So, so, so now we can think of that, we can change curves and think of this as a rule that dif assigns to different curves and numbers. And we have two-dimensional integrals, uh, integrals uh, over, say, an oriented surface. And we have expressions, so here we have, say, single dx. Uh, for two-dimensional integral, we put here two big s's, and here we have du dv, right? So, so then two. So we can think of this as a rule that assigns to each oriented surface a number. And we had triple integrals 
and here we have the x, dy, dz, these combinations. And also we can think when we compute, say, uh, a volume or total mass, mass of some subregion, if it's a density, then it's also a rule that assigns to a region a number. So, and so uh, if we're thinking about just our um, usual sp space, say Rn, so we can think of functions, just functions of, say, we have a variable x1, xn, which is our coordinates, or we can call them all as a big x, it would be vector x that is a collection of all of them. So, zero forms are just functions. So one forms are expression of this form when we have some uh, functions of x times dx1 plus functions of dx2. So basically expressions of this form. Uh, uh, then two forms would be expressions where we have dxi, dxj so far, ignore this sign. Right? And we have different com all possible combinations of that. And three forms when we have dxi, dxj, dxk, also different combinations, and so on. So let's call these formal expressions uh, differential forms. So let's consider the simplest uh, examples of um, differential forms. Say if we think that we live uh, in the plane, zero forms uh, are functions that depend on two variables, x and y. One forms would be expressions of this form, uh, p of x, y, right? We have two variables, dx, dy. Two forms would be expressions of this form, right? And that's, uh, that's all we don't have. Uh, anything else. Uh, in three-dimensional case we will have functions of three variables x, y, z and we can talk um, about um, one forms of this type, right? Some functions times dx, some functions times dy, some functions time, uh, times dz. If, by the way, you can probably see here um, in that product structure. Uh, okay, then we can consider two forms, and in 3D we also can consider three forms, expressions of this type, and that's basically it. So now uh, let me talk a little bit about this sign, which is called um, batch product, and talk about algebra of forms. So suppose that we have omega, and everywhere here when you say omega, it, it is a k form, and we have eta, and let it be an n form. And we introduce operation uh, wedge project uh, uh, product um, omega wedge eta, and that would be k plus n form, right? So we have k form, n form will be k plus n form. And um, so, so what properties we can mention that for every uh, k form there is a zero k form such that when you take your k form omega add this uh, form k form and you will get omega and if you multiply this form we'll have wedge product with eta form uh, you will get uh, zero. And so we can mention distributivity, uh, distributivity as well. So if we have omega 1 plus omega 2, which eta, it will be omega 1 eta plus omega 2 eta. And this is uh, anti commutativity. Uh, so if you switch the order, you will have to multiply by negative one to the power KL um, and we have associativity property, right? Omega one wedge with omega two 
which omega-3 we can uh, put parentheses uh, differently and if we have uh, an F form uh, if, we, if F is a zero form so just a function you, we can put it uh, everywhere so, so, so basically think of uh, a good analogy would be if you think of two vectors and a cross product of two vectors and if you have a scalar Right. So if you have a scalar, you can put scalar uh, anywhere, and also with cross product. If when you switch uh, the the order, the sign uh, changes. Now let's look at some examples. From what we just discussed, right? If we have dxi large product with dxj, if we switch the order, we will get a minus, right? Or in other notations. Uh, since dx d wedge dy equals minus dy dx, then if we take dx with itself, we should put minus, so they should be equal, so it means we're getting zero. Uh, let's uh, compute uh, some examples of, uh, consider some examples of computing wedge products. Suppose we have, say, this is uh, one form and this is, this is a two form, so we supposed to get one plus two, three form. Uh, so let's write them. So this is our form omega. This is our form eta. And then we start multiplying. So just first by first, we will have uh, x squared, dx, dy, and dz. It's important to keep the order because of this. Um, skew symmetric property then we multiply first by second we will get xz and then we will have dx dx and dy since we have dx and uh, dx so this will go to zero and then let's take this one multiply by the first we'll get negative yx and it will be dy and again dy disease so this also is zero then uh, we multiply this by that it would be just yz and then dy dx and dy again so this is zero so the only term that uh, we have left is the first one so the answer will be x squared dx dy dz so we got this three four so now let's consider uh, another example where we have a uh, wedge product between one form and one form. Right? So the answer should be a, a two form. So again, we just write the first form omega here, wedge with the second form. And then we start multiplying. So if we multiply first by first, we will have dx dx, so it will be zero. Uh, so I didn't write it here, then this, by that, it will be x squared z dx dy. Then we multiply um, this by the third one, and then we will have um, x squared y uh, dx dz. It is here. Then we multiply this by that, it will be zy squared dy dx again what order the order is important then uh, we multiply this by that we will get zero because of dy dy and then this by this one we will have uh, uh, xy squared uh, dy dz and now we can combine them so we have here we have term with dx dy and here we have term with dy dx. So we can switch the order and write them both as dx dy. So for the first one we will get sine pl uh, plus x squared z and for the second we have to switch the sign to be minus z y squared. Then we have uh, our this we put um, this term right so x y squared just copy it dy dz and for, for this one I switched uh, x and z dx and dz so we have minus 
x square dz rush dx. Uh, let's uh, introduce uh, the notion of uh, exterior derivative. So also very in in informally. So uh, uh, suppose we have a differentiable function f, right? And we agreed to call uh, functions um, zero forms. And if we compute df, say differential of f, let's think of this as some kind of operator f, uh, operator d, it gives us differential, and differential of function is a one form. And now let's think about this operator d a little bit more abstract so d is an operator so, so so basically we had zero form we got one form so now let's think of d that takes k form and produces k plus one forms and it has the following property so um, ex uh, this exterior derivative um, from, uh, of a sum, he calls sum of external derivatives. If we apply uh, our operator twice, then we will get zero. And if we have omega is a k form and eta is an L form, then when we differentiate um, wedge product, we first we apply our d to the first form, wedge second, and then plus negative one to power k, power k is related to uh, the first form, omega form, it's a k form, so that's why we have here negative one to the power k, omega um, d as a, so some sort of uh, product rule. And now let's uh, look at the example. Suppose we have here uh, one form, right, from here, uh, this introduction we expect to uh, receive a two form so let's compute so we have this one form I have here d of p dx plus q dy so I assume that my function p uh, is in three-dimensional space so then I apply the first uh, rule so it will be d of the first uh, term here plus d of the second term and then uh, we uh, compute uh, so, so here now then we use the product rule right so we first apply bd wedge dx plus p and then when we will be computing um, d of dx since we apply it twice so then it will be just zero and here we have d uh, q wedge dy plus q and again uh, d dy will be zero now uh, let me rewrite what what is the meaning of dp if p is a function that depends on three variables then it will be its differential so we have dp dx dx plus dp dy dy plus dp dz dz and everything wedge with dx plus uh, this from this term we will have differential of our function q times dy and uh, now let's uh, just uh, distribute dx so when we here when we multiply dx compute the wedge product of dx with dx, it will give us zero, right? Then from here we'll have dp dy dy dx, the order is important, plus dp dz uh, dz dx, plus from here we'll have first dx dy, right? Then when we uh, compute this, we'll have dy dy is zero, and plus uh, dq dz dz dy and then i can combine these terms right so so here we have dy dx here we have dx dy uh, i prefer to write them as dx dy in this order um 
that will be dx dy, and here dq dx minus dp dy. So um, you can uh, think of if the basis of, of our Rn is, say, uh, ijk, right, our basis 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, and 0, 0, 1, three vectors. We, we can think of dx dy uh, dz being also a basis, uh, some sort of basis uh, in the tangent space. So, and then we have this term, I just called it, and this, and the third term, I also uh, switched the order, so we have negative dy dz. So we had uh, one form, we applied d, we got uh, a two form. Well, let's consider another simple example. If omega is dx page dy, right, find a, a derivative. So we write d of dx page dy, and then we apply it to the first, it will be d dx dy, and then according to this formula, we have to put minus, so it will be dx page d dy. But uh, since we apply uh, d twice, here the first term is zero, and here we apply d twice, so uh, the result is zero. Uh, so now let's um, introduce a definition. So we just, uh, from this example, so we had omega, we computed if uh, its exterior derivative, we got zero. And uh, such forms are called closed form. So a differential k form is said to be closed if d omega, k form of omega, right? k form omega is said to be closed if, if d omega equals zero. Right? So that's what we had here. We had omega, d omega is zero, closed form. And uh, exact, the uh, differential k form is called exact if exists um, uh, k minus one form eta such that omega is d eta. So this is the definition. So uh, we can easily see that every exact form is closed, right? So suppose omega is an exact uh, form, right? Then it means, according to definition, uh, exists eta such that omega is d eta. And then um, how we want to check whether this form is closed or not? We compute uh, its exterior derivative d omega, and then we see that we have d d eta and since we apply d twice, then it will be equal to zero. We just established that every exact form is closed, but not every closed form is exact. So consider uh, this example uh, where omega is one form uh, given on a non -sim not simply connected domain, so R2 minus the origin. And Omega is the following form, so it's um, negative y over x squared plus y squared dx plus x over x squared plus y squared dy. And um, let's see that omega is closed. To see that omega is closed, we just compute uh, its differential. So it will be, uh, I just noted the first uh, the first function r and the second s uh, for simplicity. So then it will be d of r dx plus s dy. And then we differentiate. Uh, we have um, dr dx plus dx dy. And then uh, what is differential of r? It would be dr dx dx plus dr dy dy and page product with dx plus differential of s would be ds dx dx plus ds dy dy and wedge product with y. And uh, then if we take into account that dy uh, dx verge dx is zero, then we have only this term, dr dy dy dx. And 
Uh, so this is the term, and from the second we have only the s dx, the x dy. And by changing the order here, uh, interchanging dx and dy, we have this. So finally, uh, our two form is ds dx minus dr dy, dx dy. So now if we compute ds dx, taking into account that s is this function, uh, we will get this expression, and the same expression we will get if we compute dr, this function, uh, dy. Since they are equal, then their difference is zero, and uh, d omega is zero, so omega is closed. So we have shown that. And then now let's show that omega is not exact on R2 minus the origin. So you may think uh, that it is. So what does it mean to show that our form is exact? It means find form f such that omega equals df. And you may think that, okay, inverse tangent of y over x is the right function. Because uh, indeed, if you compute the differential, you will get our form of omega. But uh, where this form is defined? So it's not defined on the entire x-axis, on the entire line. So it, uh, it exists, but R2 minus the entire line. And we need to find function such that is uh, defined on R minus the origin only. And now I want to show that it is impossible to find such a function. So uh, why it is impossible? Because what does it mean the form is exact if we use the language of uh, gradient field? It, uh, of, of vector analysis, I mean. Uh, then exact form is equivalent to uh, gradient vector field, right? Indeed, if we write our function in the form omega equals df, if f exists, then differential of f, uh, we're talking about two variables, so it will be df dx dx plus df dy dy. Right? And the corresponding vector field is df dx df dy, so it is a gradient vector field. And what do we remember from multivariable calculus? That uh, integral of gradient vector field are path independent. So indeed, let me just remind you of this fact. So basically, it is uh, one of the statement fundamental theorem of calculus. Uh, that integral does not depend on path, it depends only on the initial point and the end point. Okay, so let C be a C1 path. So uh, that is continuous, continu with, uh, deri uh, continuous derivatives. So that maps uh, segment AB uh, on R2. So if we compute uh, integral of omega along C of T, it would be the same if our form is exact, if omega equals df, then here we put our df evaluated on, a C, uh, on, our, on our curve ct. And then uh, we can divide everything and multiply by uh, dt. Say uh, if we, here if we divide by dt, dt and multiply by dt. And here we divide by dt and multiply by dt. So then we will get uh, df dx as before, and then we have dx dt plus df dy dy dt and times dt. And we can see here uh, the dot product structure, where we have our gradient multiplied by the tangent to the curve, right? dx dt dy dt, this is a um, derivative of the curve. And then uh, let me remind you the chain rule. Uh, so if we have a chain rule, f composite with c prime, it will be gradient f dot product with c prime. So that's uh, what we can here, we can rewrite here instead of gradient, this composite function. And then uh, by fundamental theorem of calculus, we will have that it will be f 
at C at point B minus F at C at point A. So the integral does not depend on the path, only on initial and um, terminal points. And if here we have that if A equals to B, if, if we have a loop, right, then we subtract the same thing uh, here. So, so then the integral is zero. So this is known fact from a vector analysis that integral uh, of gradient field along um, loops is zero. So it means we started with our omega, we assume that uh, it is exact form, so then the integral is zero, right? So it's for any closed path. But I can show you easily that it is not equal to zero for omega. Let's take a unit circle centered at the origin. Let's parameterize this circle. Then what do we see from here? If x is cos cosine t, y sine t, that it will be negative uh, sine t. Uh, d dx will be also negative sine t. So here we have uh, sine square divided by sine square. And then here we have uh, cosine times, cos uh, times cosine, cosine square over, um, so uh, sine square plus cosine all, all over one. So we have cosine square from here, sine square from here. So the whole thing is one. It just multiplied by dt, right? So uh, that's what we have here. Integral from zero to, to pi of dt. And this integral equals to pi. So we are not getting zero. So it means that our form is not exact uh, on this domain, R2 minus the origin. So we just uh, established that every uh, exact form is closed, but not every closed form is exact. In the example we just considered, uh, our form was locally exact, right? So uh, we, we found that uh, for our given omega, we could find f such as omega equals d, df, but not on the entire domain where omega was defined, right? It was defined on R2 without the origin. And we were able to find f uh, only on R2 without the entire x-axis. But locally, we were able to find it. So, uh, but globally, our form was not uh, exact. Uh, so uh, the answer gives Poincaré lemma uh, when uh, closed form is exact. So let u be a contractible domain in Rn, then every closed k form on u is exact, right? So what was different in our example? We had uh, our domain with a hole, so domain couldn't be just uh, continuously deformed into a point. Uh, let's, uh, I want to prove uh, Poincaré's lemma for one special case, but before doing this, I just want to summarize uh, the theorem that we discussed uh, about integrals of exact form. So we just, we proved today the theorem that uh, let omega be an exact one form in a domain, in some domain in Rn, then for any path C of t, uh, we have integral uh, of omega is path independent, right? So it will be difference in uh, initial and terminal point. And in particular, if uh, we have a loop, then integral equals zero for exact form. I just wanted to summarize it. And uh, I, I formulated a Poincaré lemma in a general case for a contractible domain, but uh, to give you an easy proof, uh, let's talk about star-shaped domain. So it is a special case uh, of a formulation. So before considering the lemma, let's give a definition of what star-shaped um, domain is. So a domain is called uh, star shape with respect to a point A 
in this domain if for any uh, other point in this domain it contains the whole interval from a to that point uh, so, so, so basically uh, uh, here is just an illustration so it's a star shape if we can find a point at least one point a right from which we can reach any other point in this domain uh, using just segments uh, it doesn't have to be a convex domain but of course convex uh, domains um, it, uh, it's uh, uh, an example of star shape domain and, and here I drew uh, something that is not convex but still it is uh, a star shape domain right so from point A we can reach all of the points and uh, then Poincaré lemma can be formulated as let omega be a closed one form in a star shaped domain Q and Rn then omega is exact uh, so to, to prove uh, this uh, lemma let's first uh, write down omega omega is a, a, a one form so um, we have this is its representation right the representation of one form in rn it will be sum of uh, dx this or with the corresponding coefficients that are functions and let point a we said point a it's the point with respect to which our domain is star shaped let's point a be at the origin right we always can um, shift our domain to put a at the origin and um, let's consider the following uh, function f of x integral uh, along um, our uh, just a line from the origin to x and x belongs to this uh, domain in rn so x is a vector right that has um, um, components and uh, i here is a segment of line joining the origin with the point x right so when uh, t is zero then we are at at the origin when t equals one we are at the point x and so we're considering this and just as we said omega has this form so our uh, function f of x is integral from zero to one of this construction dt and uh, what we claim is that this function uh, differential uh, of uh, this function if we compute exterior derivative of this function we will get our form omega so if we want to prove this uh, we just need to prove that uh, derivative of f with respect to uh, different jk will give us uh, pj right so we have these are uh, uh, our coefficients in our form that depend on x so we just want to show that all these coefficients can be expressed as derivative of x, f with respect to corresponding x so uh, to do this let's differentiate this construction with respect to xj and um, so, so here uh, we use the chain rule if when we we have a product right and when we differentiate uh, this term uh, we use the chain rule uh, we differentiate with respect to dxj and then we will get t and this will give us this term and then we differentiate uh, this one but uh, it will give us zero every time except for the case when k and j are equals so in this case we will get this term so we have these two uh, terms then we know that omega is closed since omega is closed it means d 
of omega is zero. And as we have seen uh, on examples, which basically means that derivative of pk with respect to xj equals derivative of pj with respect to xk. Then I want to use this condition just to uh, further simplify uh, the integral. Uh, let's continue our computation. So we are here uh, at, at this expression, right? And we are using these, uh, and the result is is here. So what I did here, I just uh, exchange this sub-index and this sub-index, right? So we have uh, kj using this, uh, I exchange them, and also since t uh, doesn't depend on k, so we can pull out t out of the sum, no, not out of integration, of course, since we're integrating with respect to t, but out of the sum. And uh, the second integral we just uh, copy. And then, uh, if we look at the sum, so here we have differential of p, right? So all of these terms can be collected as differential of p, but then each term would be multiplied by dt. So to keep expression the same, I have to divide by dt. And when I divide by dt, then we can cancel dt and dt, and second again, we just copy. And then in this first integral, we do integration by parts. Integration by parts because we have the structure, if this is our u, and then dp is dv, so that would be integral, that would be equals to, we have integral, it would be equals to uv minus integral of um, v du. Right, so then here we have this term um, uv, a substitution from 0 to 1, and minus the integral v du, and here t, when we differentiate, we get dt. So from this first integral, we have these two terms. And the third one we just copy. And then we can uh, notice that uh, this term and this term, they cancel each other out, and uh, what we left is just this one. When we plug 1, we will get p g at x. When we plug 0, we get 0. So we uh, obtain what we wanted to, because initially it, it was our goal to show that df dx g equals p g. And so we can do it for every g. Thus, we have shown that uh, df has this form where each df dx g equals p g, and that is our form omega. So we have proved our claim that df equals omega.